make this fun little snowman portrait project, you'll need lots of supplies, everything you see here. So you'll need to get a pencil, a Sharpie, a white pastel, oil pastel, chalk pastel, or even a white colored pencil would be okay. Scissors, some glue, a glue stick will work just fine too. Markers for coloring, um, a white piece of paper for drawing, a bright colored piece of construction paper, nine by 12 is what I'm working with. Um, something circular for tracing. It's about the size of a CD. I use this bowl, but if you have a CD or something similar, that's great. And you'll need a little brown strip of construction paper. So now would be a good time to pause the video and collect the supplies that you see on the screen. Okay, we're gonna start drawing our snowman today by first laying out his body shape. So we're gonna draw one partial circle here that goes off of the paper for his head. And then we're gonna draw a much larger partial circle right here that's gonna go off the bottom part of the paper for his body. That's how we're going to start. You can freehand that, or if you think it's easier, I've grabbed a bowl here or a dish or even a CD would work great. And a trick if you're going to trace something is to find the corner of your paper. I know I've got white on white here. Make it easier for you to see the corner of my paper here. I'm going to scooch my bowl all the way until that corner just barely disappears. And then I'm going to trace everything else that I can see on the paper. So I get that shape right there. Next, what we'll wanna do, and I'll leave this underneath so you can see my outlines a little bit better. Next, what I'm going to do is start a line nice and high up here on the side of our snowman's face and make a very gentle curve downward so that he looks nice and round. Um, it'll make him look jolly and cozy for winter time. The next decision we need to make is what kind of hat we want our snowman to make. I have lots of examples here. This is kind of like a beanie or a knit cap. You can make that shape. Or in this example, I made a traditional top hat. So there's slightly different shapes depending on what you want to make. I think for this one, I'm going to go ahead and make a beanie. So what I'm going to do is create two lines that go just past that little line that's making the shape of my face, like this. If I was going to make a top hat, I would make those two lines just a little bit longer. These are shorter. And then I'm going to round them when I connect them so that it looks like the shape of the hat is very soft. Now I'm going to erase the line inside that new hat shape because we can't see his head through his hat. So now we have a nice soft shape for a hat. We'll do some designing um, of the hat a little bit later. Now I'm gonna worry about the scarf. We want the scarf to feel really soft and fluffy and warm up against his skin, his snow skin, right? So what we're going to do is draw a line a little above his chin, just like this. And it's going to meet right here where his face meets his body. It's gonna go right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase where his chin is now because his scarf is covering that part. Next, what I'm going to do is round a shape outside of his body here, and then I'm gonna start heading inward. This is gonna be the top part of his scarf. I'm gonna stop here so I can show you again. This is this part of the scarf that we've drawn, and in a moment here, I'm gonna draw the tails with you. So first, I wanna erase this line that is the outline of his body that is now wrapped in a scarf, so I'm gonna erase that. Now I want to draw the tails of the scarf. I'm going to start with kind of a little gentle curve there. And I want the distance here to be the same about the same as this one right here. Because when we pull our scarf off, it is the same width all the way from one end to the other end. It doesn't get skinnier at the end. So we want to make sure the ends or the tails of our scarf are nice and thick and wide. And then this one I'm going to tuck behind here by overlapping. So I can't see the rest of this one because this one's hanging in front of it. Okay, now let's work on the face. That's one of my favorite parts. This is where your snowman gets its personality and starts to look really cute. So I'm gonna make two simple little eyes like this. The smaller, the cuter in my experience. Here's what this one looks like with those two little eyes. Here's a different example that's partially made that has like these little um, rainbow shapes. And here's one that has more like dots instead of little ovals that are a little further apart. It doesn't matter if they're further apart or closer together, but the smaller you make the eyes, the cuter his little face and expression is going to look. Next, I'm going to start my carrot nose by making a rounded shape like this that starts right in between my two eyes just below them. I'm going to make a nice long pointy shape out to the side. 
and it's rounded here on the end so that it looks like we actually stuck that carrot into his snow face. You wanna make it look a little more realistic? You can put a couple of little stripes on the sides of your carrot nose. And then you have a few choices for the mouth. I like to make a mouth that looks kind of like this with a little line on the end there. But another option might be to make it look like his mouth is made out of uh, buttons or raisins or pieces of coal or stones. That would be an okay choice too. Okay, um, if you have room down the front, so if you look where your face is and you go directly down right here, this is going to be the middle, the front, where buttons would go. Your scarf tail might be covering that space, like in this example. So I didn't draw any buttons on this example. But on this one, I had space to do it. So that's up to you. If you don't have room, don't squish it on. But if you do have room and you like the idea of buttons, go ahead and draw those on. I'm gonna draw a couple of these. They're being slightly overlapped by my scarf and that's okay. And then buttons usually have two or four little holes in the middle for um, threading your string through to sew them on. So I'm gonna draw those. We are going to include an arm later. That's what your little um, brown piece of construction paper is for that I showed at the beginning. Um, but we're not gonna do it yet. That's gonna be in the final steps. Right now though, we are going to decorate the hat and the scarf. And you can decorate them so that they match, like this example, it looks like it's a matching set. Or you can do something that doesn't match. This hat doesn't match this scarf, but it makes for a really nice colorful combination going on on my snowman. You can choose to do traditional all black uh, top hat if you want. And this scarf has some stripes. And in this set, I made it look like they kind of go together, but they don't match exactly. I took one of the colors from my stripes here and included it for my hat. So you can choose any of those ideas or your own ideas as well. And then you're just going to sketch that out. I think for this one, I'm gonna go with a little zigzag shape. And I kind of like the idea of my hat and scarf matching. So I think I am going to maybe make a stripe in my scarf here. And if I do that stripe along the top here, I'm gonna wanna do it along the top here too. This side I can't really see because it's kind of covered by my other one. And then I'm going to make that same little zigzag shape. So it looks kind of like they're a matching set. finished with your Sharpie and you're finished with your eraser to neaten up your artwork so that it looks ready for coloring, then all you have to do is color in a few items. You want to make sure that you leave the white parts of your snowman that should remain white, white. So he looks like he's actually made out of snow. But you're going to want to color in your hat, your carrot nose, your scarf, and if you have buttons, you'll want to color those too. finished coloring in all the important parts of your snowman, you're ready to cut him out. So when you cut him out, it's important to try to maintain what I call bubble cutting. And that just means that I'm not cutting right on the black outline. I am cutting, leaving a little white bubble of paper between my scissors and the black outline. The reason I'm doing this is because it really makes your artwork look extra nice and neat and helps it kind of pop off of the colorful background paper that you've chosen to glue it to. So I'm still keeping my shapes nice and neat. I am just making sure that I leave a little white bubble between my scissors and my outline. So I chose orange paper. I'm just gonna lay this on here to show you how that looks. And that's gonna look great. See how that white bubble really makes such a difference? So I am going to flip this over. And you can use a glue stick instead if you need to. With a glue stick, you need to press a little bit hard and apply a little bit more glue because it's a thinner substance. And with a bottle of glue, you need a very skinny little line 
and I am just kind of tracing the outline of my snowman with that skinny, skinny glue line. There's no need to put any glue anywhere in the middle. And I don't know if you can see with the lighting on my uh, camera here, how close to the edge I have put this glue. I keep it about a finger width away from the edge so that it has room to kind of spread out without showing when I flip it over. So I am going to glue this so neatly because my top and bottom and left edge will line up perfectly with my colored paper. And then all that I will see of the colored paper is the side here. Now we're ready for snowflakes. I like to use a white oil pastel for the snowflakes because they show up nice and bright on the colored background paper. If you don't have oil pastels or don't have a white one, a white colored pencil might work out okay or white construction paper crayon. Um, let's see, you could also use maybe like a silver Sharpie or a paint marker if you have one so that it will show up nice and bright on this background. So what I'm going to do to make some snowflakes is I'm gonna start by making a plus sign and then I'm gonna put something on the end of each of those that match. And then on top of that, I will draw an X and I'll put something on the end of my X that match as well. And I might have room to just put a couple of those. So I'll do that. And then you won't have room to draw any more than that. So then I'll draw some medium sized snowflakes by making an X with a line through the middle. run out of room for those, the final ones are going to just be little white circles. And then you have some really nice variety in your snowflakes and it really looks like a beautiful snowfall. Snowfall. Okay, and then the final step is going to be to use that little brown piece of construction paper I told you about. I'm going to do two things. First thing is I'm going to use my scissors to round one end so that this is the end that I'm going to stick into the snow of my snowman. See how that rounded end helps it look more three-dimensional, like you actually stuck it into the snow? And then what I'm going to do is hold it where I want it to be. See this extra part sticking off? I'm gonna use my scissors to just trim that so that it goes right up against the edge of my paper and lines up. Now all I have to do is flip it over and give it the tiniest little stripe of glue to line it up so that the edge of my stick arm for my snowman lines up right up against the edge of my paper. And then my snowman is complete. And when you finish your snowman, ask your parent to photograph it as best as they can, trying to make sure that the edges stay nice and squared up at 90 degree angles. And then if they can email that to me at my school account, that's l 3 at susd.org, then I will make sure that I include you in this special um, holiday gift project that we're doing for first graders this year. Hope you guys had fun.